Scott, black holes are fascinating to those of us who like to think about the universe because they are like a laboratory that we can use in a theoretical sense uh, to test laws of physics. Uh, as you see the laws of physics and black holes from your perspective in quantum information theory, how do black holes help thought processes? Well, uh, you know, black holes were sort of uh, outside of uh, what I would normally think about in my day job, you know, until pretty recently, actually. Uh, uh, recently, there's been a, a whole new controversy that's flared up about yeah. black holes called the firewall debate. And, uh, uh, and and it actually has some amazing connections to theoretical computer science okay. that have gotten me interested. Okay, but maybe, you know, I should step back and say, you know, what is so strange about black holes, right? What's, to me, what, what's strange about them is that, you know, they raise, you know, almost a philosophical question, you know, as, as to, you know, is whatever happens or doesn't happen inside of a black hole even within the scope of science at all? Right, because you know black holes are kind of like Las Vegas, right? What happens there stays there, right? And so you know physicists put forward all these different you know ideas. You know maybe uh, you know it's a portal to a parallel universe. You know maybe uh, you know you go through until you you know hit the singularity in the middle. Or you know these days some people believe maybe you know you can't even get past the event horizon that the laws of physics don't even continue past there, right? And and it's not even clear if these questions are well defined, right? Because, you know, no experimenter who, who goes in can ever tell us the results of their experiment. Right, uh, you know, uh, they can only tell it to someone else who also went in. <laughs> okay, best we can do is to formulate laws of physics that work outside of the black hole and hope that those laws just naturally imply something about what would happen in the interior. So, what is so, this nexus between computer mm -hmm. science and computer information mm -hmm. theory and, and, and quantum information theory and mm -hmm. black holes? So recently, uh, there was um, a, a big. Uh, 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 paradox about black holes that was pointed out. And there have been a lot of paradoxes about black holes over the decades. But uh, this one was exciting because it seems to sort of defeat all the, the resolutions to the previous paradoxes that people have come up with. It's called the firewall paradox. And it's a little bit technical to explain the details of it. But uh, what's interesting about it is that it involves an actual experiment that you could imagine doing, at least, where you would have to scoop up all of the Hawking radiation that comes comes out of a black hole, right? So we've known since the 1970s that black holes are not completely black. They eventually radiate away after a mere 10 to the 70th years or so. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, you would have to collect all this radiation, wait until the black hole is, let's say, 80% evaporated, or more than halfway evaporated. And then you would have to find some quantum entanglement between the different photons of Hawking radiation that had come out. Then you'd have to jump into the black hole. Mm -hmm. And then you'd have to also find quantum entanglement between those photons and a photon that was inside the black hole. And if you found that, this would violate a basic principle of quantum mechanics, which is called the monogamy of entanglement. It says that the same photon can't be entangled with two other photons, right? But if you just follow all of these very plausible physical principles, it looks like it has to be. So something has to give somewhere. And so for the last two years, physicists have been holding conference after conference, just trying to, you know, figure out which of their assumptions that led to this paradox, you know, is the faulty one. Mm -hmm. uh, now, there was a striking paper um, in 2013 by uh, Daniel Harlow and Patrick Hayden, uh, which suggested that part of the resolution of this paradox might actually have to do with computation. In particular, they gave very strong evidence that to actually do this experiment, uh, to actually uh, scoop up all of this Hawking radiation coming out of the black hole and actually find this quantum entanglement that the theory says should be there, would require an exponentially long quantum computation. Okay, so that, you know, before you had barely made a dent in it, the black hole would have already evaporated okay. anyway. Right, because the black hole, as I said, will evaporate after a mere 10 to the 70th years. Whereas doing this computation might take you two to the 10 to the 70th years. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so they gave very strong evidence that this decoding problem is indeed hard. 
And in recent work, building on theirs, I was able to give even stronger evidence that the problem is hard, mm. right? Based on very, very foundational beliefs in uh, theoretical computer science. What's the implication of all this? Right. So people argue whether this has any implication, mm -hmm. you know, for resolving the firewall paradox, because you could still say, OK, suppose it's hard, right, to, you know, then that still doesn't tell me what, what happens in the interior of the black hole. And, you know, and Harlow and Hayden uh, freely admit that. They admit that a theory, you know, is still missing. But, you know, what they say is that at least this experiment that, you know, might have caused you to worry that, you know, that there can be no interior of the black hole or something like that, right? At least, you know, this experiment does not seem to actually be doable. And so maybe the laws of physics are just sort of conspiring to prevent us from doing the experiment that would reveal the problem, right? <laughs> Maybe as long as you have limited computation resources, you know, everything looks good, you can jump through the black hole, you know, everything looks fine, until of course you hit the singularity, then you'll be ripped to shreds. But you know, but before that, everything should just look as, you know, our classical um, uh, theories or as, as uh, general relativity would have predicted. And uh, so maybe everything is okay. Now, whether that really resolves it or not, that's above my pay grade. <laughs>